of the breakout groups. This was an adorable, I was going to show it, but we don't really have time, um, of what the kids in the child care room did. They were thinking about how to make things better, and it was just adorable. So go on the site, um, resistatri.com, right? Resist.com. Um, and you can watch the videos of the different of the different groups reporting out. Um, this was the agenda for the meeting, and I just scanned it. You can just see. So there was a song, which was kind of cute, and then um, Aaron Rudenberg did the welcome, and he gave an update about what's going on at the state level. If you if you want to stay really involved with Resist Hate Rhode Island Providence, you can get on his mailing list because he's very out there and open that this is his thing, this is what he's involved in. He just sent out an email to his supporters about about trying to be hopeful about the new year um, that I thought was just very beautifully written. I just, I, I find him very inspiring. Um, and really, really amazing on that. Um, so then there was a federal update and then the only regional meeting update was Janine, which was very cool for Warwick. I was so proud of us. <laughs> we were the only ones there. Um, and then there was the introduction to the breakout groups and and how they really wanted to be about action. So, which which for some group was a lot of pressure, right? Because this is the first time people were really starting to talk about it with these other people in the room and stuff. But then, then for other groups, they were already very organized. They were already involved in those issues. And I saw, for example, on the um, the gun violence, it said um, what was the the, the sign said something, and then they changed the sign. So originally, it said gun control. Yes, it's not gun control. And then they covered and then that gun and wrote uh, gun violence prevention. prevention. So that just a, a little yes. part for for me about there was some tension. You know, there was some stuff there. Not because I saw any particularly Trump supporters, but because this is a the lot of stuff. Important. Yeah, this is a lot of stuff, and there's nuance in everything. Right. So I appreciate that that everyone was aware of nuance um, there. So um, they did that, and then, um, so this was the um, the sort of guidelines for each of the groups, but there was a person who was already planned to meet to facilitate each of those groups, which was great. Um, then actually, um, Craig said that their group was so big, the reproductive rights group was so big, that they had to break up into four small groups in order to actually have a conversation, which was very cool. Um, and then this was an events calendar, and unfortunately, we're already past everything. Um, so there was January 4th, Fighting Poverty with Faith Vigil at the State House, um, and all of these are on the rifuture.org events calendar, so if you're not checking that website regularly, um, that's a place to find out about these different kinds of events. Um, the problem right now with the um, the Resist Hate Rhode Island website is that there's not easy links to everything, right? So there's a really easy one for the healthcare one, resisthateri.com slash healthcare. But for a lot of the other ones, they're very long and drawn out. So what we did is we put them on our Facebook page. The links are there for a lot of this different information that I'm going to show you so that you don't have to try and write down like, you know, a 900 letter <laughs> um, link and hopefully we'll get better at that. So for example, this um, is up on their website. It's it's actually a survey link. So the link is very long. But you can immediately right now sign up to be involved in any of those working groups that met that day. And what that means is they're going to email you with all of the information from future meetings if you can't attend. Um, and also keep letting you know about legislation and all of the different things to inform you about. Those subgroups could be formed into departments of resist hate. Like a sub department, sorry. I think I mean I think what's happening is that things like Moms in Action are becoming facilitators of the issues. So there's organizations already, like not reinventing the wheel, there's organizations already sort of facilitating the issues, but it's not just limited to one organization, right? No. So no, that's what's great really about it too. Yeah. Is if you if you you know sign up for you know the gun violence prevention, that doesn't mean that you automatically are on board with Moms in Action. There's other organizations that are also providing information and asking for support. Yeah. For example, I I do uh, part in the workers' rights one, and 
and they had different people from some of the unions like SEIU there and a couple others. Um, but there were also a lot of people in that group who weren't part of the union that wanted to know like how do we help the workers, right? So um, very interesting <coughs> conversation that happened. But I think the benefit of this is if there are like one or two things that you're really interested in, there are going to be ongoing meetings for each of these subgroups that are going to get organized and uh, you, know, you might be able to make some pretty good yeah, I just got um, an invitation to join the healthcare one um, from someone who works for Planned Parenthood uh, from my Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, so yeah, send yeah. it out to. So it's it's issue based, but there are organizations behind those issues that you know that are getting people involved in what they're doing. So it's not actually just that group, but then some of those groups are really fired up and are actually you know creating like committees. So it's very, it's very interesting. For me, to be perfectly frank, I was in the education group because I'm an educator and I'm a mom, and I, I found it very tension-filled. It was very, um, <coughs> lot, just a lot of, basically, charter school versus public school arguments. <coughs> and it, there was just so much tension, and I found it very difficult to pay attention and there were and there were other things too, but it was it was still very interesting, and I still think people got a lot out of it. And there were a lot of actual teachers there who heard from other non-teachers about what our concerns are about what's happening in the schools and things like that. So it was very useful, but it was also very intense. And they're very politically right now. That group is is very much against this. Um, Achievement First charter school company coming into Rhode Island and, and all of that. So it, it's a lot of like jump on the bandwagon kind of stuff for me that I'm not ready to jump on, you know, because I need more information. So I just wanted to say that because I feel like if you click one of these buttons, like as a human being, you have the right to sort of parse through the information. And no one here is saying you click, you know, climate justice you're on board with everything that they're about, right? And for everything that those, those folks are talking about. I just wanted to, um, just very quickly, there's some great stuff on there, um, racial justice, the uh, LGBTQ, um, because we talked about, uh, some, of the, some of them could use more people than others because like you said, like Craig's group had a ton of people. Ton, yeah. Some of the other ones might not have as many, but um, just how a shout you, out to you know, the, sorry. How do you know which ones don't have enough? Um, I don't know. I just I just saw from the groups that uh -huh. were gathering. Which, one, did, which ones did the racial justice and the? Um, I I think the the civil liberties and legal rights. Um, that one was actually that was a new one. one. Yeah. Okay. That so one was that one. They didn't even have that one, and then the attorney, those two attorneys, yeah. formed that because they weren't on the list. Okay. Which was kind of cool, I thought. So I don't know, it might be just a thing like to see, maybe at, uh, and we can do a report maybe from the next meeting. You know, here's here's the groups that are looking for more people to get involved. But uh, I know the climate justice, just because somebody asked me to mention it, um, for anyone who's not aware of what's going on in Burrowville, uh, they're going now to Winsocket to try to get water to pay, uh, sorry, get water from Winsocket to help build the, um, the fracking in Burrowville. So there's an action on the January 6th. There's a meeting or something on January 6th. But there's it's, um, it's on the site. I'll show you where it is. Yeah, if yeah. you go to the, the Resist ERI page um, and there is a, a sub group on Facebook to learn more about that because there's a lot of people who are really upset about that. So I, I just said that I would mention that. Yeah. Let me just get let me just get through this and like give you all the information and then because again, I do really want to be, I, I realize coming out on this night is a lot. So I want to be respectful of people's So this is, um, that's sort of their tagline, Resist Hate RI, which I just, I think is great. So I wanted to put it up there. Um, but the ones that haven't happened as of today, except this did happen, but then they're, um, they have the email address. So to find out what happened yesterday at that meeting, you can email Kate Montero to find out more about what that group is doing. So that was one of their updates that is posted on the Resist Hate website. So all of this stuff is there, but I just wanted to bring up the things that haven't happened yet. So for example, this is happening tomorrow, um, and this is about his education secretary nominee, um, 
who is um, very outspoken about you know wanting to privatize public education. So that um, that was a very big deal for them. Um, January 9th at the Jewish Community Center, um, they're discussing plans. So I didn't know, Barbara, did you know anything about this? Yeah, that's, um, that, that's a meeting that's having <coughs> um, a statewide meeting. Um, that's a statewide meeting, January 9th. Um, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'm having a meeting in South County, January. To, um, on, on here, there's um, a Facebook page, um, Moms, Moms Demand Action for uh, Rhode Island. It's volunteers, Rhode Island volunteers for Moms Demand Action. We have an event page, and all the events are up there. Okay, that's the easiest way. Um, the people down in my area, um, most of us are um, over 60, so I send out a monthly newsletter because uh, I don't do Facebook so much, and um, <laughs> so I send out a monthly newsletter what's going on. I've just started down there. This is my first month down there, so. So this is about the Affordable Care Act, and um, they have a calendar of phone calls. So they have a great link, right? Resistnetary.com slash healthcare. So you can just go there, and that's about making calls, and that's very specific to the Affordable Care Act, um, which I personally benefit from. Um, so when I'm a mom, and I am a uh, Medicaid, I belong to Medicaid through affordable health care only because of the changes. I have a chronic illness that if I did not have health insurance would be very problematic. And um, I am of childbearing age, so you know, family planning and all that. So all of this that like hearing you guys talk just is very powerful. You know, I'm sure I'm sure everyone here is sort of thinking of all their own personal connections. Um, this was the Civil Liberties and Legal Rights Group. Um, like I said, they were just formed ad hoc at that meeting, which was pretty cool. Um, so they want to call on um, Senator Whitehouse about the Jeff Sessions nomination. And January 11, Working Families, who we had a representative here speak, and she also spoke at the Providence meeting. Um, they're having a meeting on January 11th um, about the upcoming election. So it, to me, that's very hopeful that people are already, you know, in December thinking about that. Um, so this is sort of my thing. It was just a couple of online action opportunities. I'm very passionate about what Obama's been doing with clemency, particularly for people who've been um, incarcerated for life for nonviolent drug offenses. Um, he has um, um, allowed clemency for more prisoners than any uh, president before him. And the stories are just like heart-wrenching, incredible stories of people who, because of this war on drugs, were just thrown into prison, particularly people of color. Um, so there's opportunities at colorofchange.org to um, sign petitions and um, get involved, trying to get him to do as many of these clemencies as possible before he leaves office. So, that's one um, opportunity. So that's app.color change slash sign of honor. But we have the link on, on our site. Um, there's a climate change petition that was published in Scientific, <coughs> on Scientific American's website. Um, there are 800 scientists that signed this letter urging the incoming president to take six crucial steps. Regarding, like, first of all, like, acknowledge it. <laughs> that would be my first step. <laughs> like, yeah, it exists. Um, and then you can also sign their petition um, regarding this information. So it's just, this is the kind of stuff that I see, and I'm like, this is amazing kind of stuff. And then this, I just wanted to show you this very quick um, video. Um, the MoveOn.org, if you're not on their mailing list, you definitely should be. Um, they put together this video um, to start this you know intense thing that's going to have to happen to make sure that this that there is no registry not this right that there is no such thing as a registry um, but i thought that this was a, an important um 
theme because we didn't have anybody come today to speak about um, immigration. Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach told Reuters that Trump's policy advisors have discussed drafting a proposal for his consideration to reinstate a registry for immigrants from Muslim countries. My name's Kamal, and I was almost deported the last time our government tried to register Muslims. After 9-11, the Bush administration started a special registration program for people from predominantly Muslim countries. The day I registered is probably the most memorable day in my life. I, I remember going up to the federal government building in a cold New York morning, seeing just a sea of brown men wrapped around the corner. And we were all shuttled into the government building a few at a time. And I remember being fingerprinted. I remember being photographed. It was like a mugshot. I'm lucky to be here to tell a story of success, to tell a story of having survived that process but thousands of individuals are not here to tell that story. 13,000 people were deported because of this program. And this is a program that's failed on its own terms. Not a single terrorist was uncovered through this program, but um, families and communities felt the pain of this um, rush to overreact in the face of fear. We can't let this happen again. Obviously, this was a low turnout, holidays and all of that, so we probably won't have another meeting until, you know, mid-January to late January, just to hope to get more people, because we did have quite an impressive turnout at the last meeting. Um, so please let people know, and um, let us know if you know people who would be great guest speakers to come in and give information and inform people. Right now, we're not really equipped to take, like, I really want to help with this. Like, that's, we're not equipped to do that. But go to that um, survey and sign up for all of the issues, you know, whatever whatever it is. And those are the people who are going to email and say, can you make some phone calls? Can you do this? So this group isn't really ready to say, we need 10 people to do this, or we're going to the state house tomorrow, or whatever. But that's happening individually with each of those groups, which is really very cool. Can you tell me, okay, I know that Aaron started the resisting in politics and get ready for this Aaron. Aaron and working family. Well, just a correction, yeah. that's the RI organization okay. that happens to be meeting in the province because it's central. It's central. Okay, so right. it, yeah, it's it's a it's a statewide thing. It's a statewide thing. And you're breaking off into communities. Yes. We're not breaking off. We'll not break off groups. It's subsections. It's like chapters of that okay. overall. Completely organic. This was, Janine and, and Jennifer, this was complete, and 
my involvement was I saw it on the library website, literally. Like that's it's supplemental. It's, it's completely not organic. <laughs> okay, so you're still part of the, the resist hate movement. You're, you're, okay, you all yep. want. Right. It is right. It is okay. is resist hate. So when Janine got up at that meeting, it was just like, what's happening regionally? Because they found out that there were some regional meetings that people were having regional meetings, but there's nothing. There's nothing official like that. You know, there's a title or a name for us or anything. It just was. I just thought it was fantastic because I went to the province meeting. I was all fired up, and then I'm like, now I have to go back to Warwick. <laughs> you know, like now what do I do? Like I don't live in Providence anymore. And then I, was, I saw what they were doing. I was like, this is fantastic. So shouldn't we like maybe just an idea for the next meeting? Um, which maybe the timing, like maybe, maybe either right before, maybe even just like right after the inauguration would be good timing. Because I think everyone's going to freak out again on like, January twenty first. So maybe like, <laughs> right after that, so, like people had a place. That's a great to go. idea. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we could do some thinking about like what can we do that's specific to Warwick. Like, are there are there particular elected officials we should be targeting? Are there particular um, issues that are that matter? Because I think a lot of us do go to the Board of Providence, and and just avoiding duplication because. You know, it's not that far away, and people could go to that one if they want to. So, like, right. what can we do here that we can't do there, and, and how can we act at a very local level? There's, I mean, for an example of that, is that education subgroup wants folks to talk to their mayors about creating this safe schools initiative, which hasn't fully been drafted yet, but um, the learning community charter school in Central Falls has already started creating. Um, some type of a safe school policy for their school, primarily because like 83% of their students are um, Latino, and probably many of them are also undocumented. So they're creating sort of a thing, and what they want to do is get every mayor in every town in Rhode Island to adopt that safe schools initiative, whatever it ends up looking like, or obviously making it work for that particular town. <coughs> so that's an example, like I would immediately bring that here and say, okay, how do we, you know, who wants to do that? How do we do that? Instead of repeating what they're doing. Yeah, and maybe just like figuring out, okay, like, you know, someone from a PTA here, like someone from, like how can we get, like who's coming to the meeting that like has power to sort of get more people? Right. There's yeah. a board school committee, but the majority of them do not really care for anybody. Like for example, right now there's a special ed problem. People are losing IEPs and they refuse to investigate. The mayor has a hands-off attitude. And it's a really big problem right now. I, because I serve on a committee with a uh, member of the school committee, pretty much the only one that really cares. And we, um, it's like if you need an interaction between the city council school committee, we have teachers on it, so we just discuss, but we're completely ignored by the school committee because they don't want to do anything. So that's the kind of issue that like maybe like we could take up and like you know. Like we've got a lot of people in the room now who care about us and we've got a lot of energy. Like maybe now like we can have some targeted things where if, you know, if people do care we can Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. definitely yeah. some targeted things here in Warwick that and there might be organizations that are already out there doing the work that we just need to invite into this and and uh, you know, help them with volunteering and things like that. So um, I think that's gonna be more of a focus too going forward. But I think you're right to, to have that next meeting when people are fired up again, because I think that we're kind of going through this right now, so everyone was really upset, and then, you know, there were like 1,500 people at the first Providence meeting, which was right after the election, and then there were about 800 people at the last meeting, which is still enormous, but again, it's not just for Providence, it's for all of Rhode Island, so that's, you know, that's pretty small if you think of it that way. Which is good because that's not a very big cafeteria. <laughs> so, I get very nervous when it's too many people in a small space. Um, but but I think I think you're right, and we get it, you know, right after the inauguration, and we get more energy and stuff. I think we do have to be careful. This is my opinion that that we don't we don't spread ourselves so thin on on so many different issues like that. The charter school thing was was difficult for me because I'm not ready to jump on a bandwagon. About some of those things, and and they felt a little peripheral to to Trump and to and to the hate that was coming out of his agenda, right? So that that was that was a challenge for me, and I wouldn't want anyone to turn away because the issues are were peripheral for them, and not like obviously the reproductive rights. I mean, he Craig could not have told us any clearer what what is going to happen. With Trump, and I think that's why people are coming. Is that very concrete orange person? Is making them upset about what what's going to happen? Well, they have a, you know, it's like, mom, we have a, a, a 
thing, you know, and, and for the educators, they need to have a big thing. Right, right. It's very hard. It's very, yeah, yeah it's very hard. I mean, I, I did a, um, I, my students had to go through a drill for an active shooter on campus. And it was so poorly organized, and it was just, it was so bad. And I just thought, you know, this this is an issue I could, I could get around. Like this, you know, this matters. But at the same time, the active shooter on campus drills is so secondary to, you know, making sure that he doesn't overturn stuff and, and bring in people who are gonna, gonna change the way, you know, we feel safe. So did you, you know, in the so, so I mean, I just feel like there are all these tensions in trying to figure this out, and like I don't think there's like a right answer, but, but right. I do think like you know we do need to arrive at some kind of consensus and some kind of feeling of like where this is all going. And it, you know, on the one hand, I think it would be really cool, and it sounds like other people think it'd be cool to be more locally focused on what we can do here in Oregon. But at the, at the same time, yeah, how do you avoid getting too splintered off into little things that maybe not everyone can get behind? I mean, we're here because we're scared of Trump, right? Like that's like the uniting thing, but like we need to have like concrete things that we can like, do. So I, civil I, rights is one thing that no one can deny. That um, like there are certain rights that anyone is entitled to. Like and even and rights that even Republicans will be would back. Like the last thing, civil rights I think should be a big thing with this group because yeah. like who can deny that we should have civil rights? Like like rights given us and enamored by the Constitution. That should be a big direction of this state and should be a uniting factor for everyone. I agree. I think like yeah, religious freedom, civil rights, things like that that like First Amendment rights. Yes. Yeah. Right. And there are fantastic organizations, national and regional, that are doing work around that. So that's where we want to bring that information from the main group. And like I said, go on that website and you'll see some amazing people gave those report outs from the from the groups and they were so concrete like the actions that the groups came up with as well as the actions that were already going to happen anyway was really was really amazing so i you know i highly recommend that you just sort of peruse through there and and you know sign up for the issues that matter or sign up for all of them and then unsubscribe if you don't you know like what you're getting but um i mean i think that there's there's plenty of work to be done and, and to figure out what specifically we can do right here is what's going to bring people to this room. So I think you're right, like both things are so important. You know, what, what specifically Warwick residents want to do and work on and everything is what's going to get people here. But that's going to be the here. election in two more years, really. I mean, that's what you're going to be working on is to get those people in your ward system that believe the same way you do. That's what yeah, but we need to like be on that like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other thing is though, like it, it, we touched on it a little bit today, and you know, Craig talked about it. There's going to be things that are going to happen even over the next two years that people are going to need to be vocal about and show their support, especially if it comes down to like, you know, whether it be the um, concealed weapon bill or it be something on um, uh, reproductive rights. If our majority in the General Assembly doesn't agree with people, but people have to let their voice be known and show up, go to the State House, or even if it's something locally, go to the City Council meetings or wherever, and let your voices be heard, you know, so that they know that there's this pressure coming from the people who they are supposed to be representing. And um, you that's know, huge. I think that's speak huge. Up. And that's, and that's another thing I think this group can do, is make sure you're not the only one who shows up, right? So, you know, we go, so, you know, my fear and, and also my assumption is that something is going to happen in Warwick once this man gets in office. Something, you know, I and mean, we've already had hate crimes increase exponentially across the country. Something is going to happen in Warwick, and we, the people in this room, are going to want to respond. and. What's going to be great about this group is that there will be a group to help you respond. The potential yeah. also was for this hate. I think we need a membership to know who's part of this group so we can mobilize when needed. But I think that's what the individual issue groups are doing. I don't. I don't think anyone is trying to create like an overarching membership. I don't. I don't think that's an effort right now. I don't know. Did you have a question? I, mean, I was just wondering, Janine, like how much work was it for you to win your election? Um, Bill Alaska. Bill Alaska. And I have to say that um, because I had spent time working or 
grassroots effort for Bernie Sanders and then when his campaign came, I learned, a, I learned a lot there. But we really, we hit the ground every single day. We canvassed the district five times. But it was kind of like what people were talking about. We just pointed out the differences. We, we talked about where we stood. We didn't like take a, a negative tone or anything like that. We just said, here's what I believe. Um, here's where I am on, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, pro-choice versus anti-choice or you know, the NRA meetings and things like that. And I just spoke about the issues and where I be believed. And it really resonated with people. So if anyone in here knows anyone who wants to get involved in, you know, I keep telling people, like, anyone can do this. And everyone should, if they're interested, do it because you can make a big difference. It was you like, know, like, I don't know, you might have campaigned for three months or something like that. Or so we you had know, a, you um, and a couple other people, uh, like, I don't know what some of the numbers are. So we had a we had a primary only. Um, there was no one from the Republican or Independents that ran, so it really came down okay. to the primary. So our big thing was from like May through the um, election on September 13th. But in all those years, Bill Ross had never been he, Yeah, and he never had a Democratic primary. So. I think it was also so in this election too. Like, this time, well, you know what? He's, he's yeah. been there for a while. Get, I never saw him. If you get those agencies behind you, like we had Marcia Raglan Vessel, um, and we campaigned for her. She ran in Cranston, Providence, Providence, and she ran against um, De Simone. De Simone. Yeah. And and Marcia is a teacher from Jamaica, right? De Simone had been in there for twenty some odd years, and he was the House Majority. Yes, he was second in command, and, and Marcia got it. But we raised, we, not that we raised a lot of money, but we had fundraisers for her, you know, because we wanted her in office. Moms won't give anyone money, but we had, um, there's a guy, Boris Bailey, he's an artist in Providence, and he does um, anti-gun sculptures and stuff. He's having a show in Boston, and he opened up a studio, and we had people come in, and Aaron was there, and um, Knight, Jason Knight, and, you know, People came, you know, and donated money for it because we want her in office. It doesn't, I live in Narragansett, but Marcia, having Marcia in office is still going to affect me. Right. You know, having everybody that, good people in office is going to affect us all. And so, you know, I would say, you know, yeah, let people know. It's not like you're beating them over the head of what you believe. They're not going to, everybody's not going to believe what she's going to believe, but, you know, just go hey. So your group doesn't get money to do We do not. But the NRA does. That's the NRA the does. Advantage. And someone said to me, well, if you are so set on having Teresa in office, then you should pay her campaign. We don't bribe. We expect Teresa to do and vote the way that she should. And, you know, we donated, donated hundreds of hours to her campaign because we believe in her. And that's really more important, I think, you know, is if you're making phone calls. Yeah, helping canvas, helping spread the word. That's, you know, go to a fundraiser. I mean, it's it's for the books, or you know, they feed you. <laughs> Before we go, I was just because there's so few of us. I was wondering if you guys wanted to just introduce yourselves yeah. and maybe say something positive, so we can end on a positive note about how you're feeling positively well, about something. <laughs> <laughs> January twenty first at the state house. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, that's the march on the state house, which I'm going to go to. I'm not going to go to DC. Um, who is sponsoring that? Is it just? Are you guys doing it? Is this it? It's just a grassroots no. effort. Yeah, right. Okay, grassroots. There's okay. some some people who are. Um, it's from the march from. The yeah. work, working families mm -hmm. knows about the the buses. Yeah, that I don't. She talked there, about that. So there's like some people who are taking a bus down. There's right. One, but the one in the in uh, Providence is, is yeah. organized by some people who weren't able to go that just right. came okay. together to. Right. right, because they did it just late. Yeah, yeah. but I think it's going to be a good turnout. Right. Yeah. 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 So I'm Jessica Stoltz. I'm new to the state. I just moved here this summer from Florida. Welcome. So I think. So I've just been trying to. Um, get my bearings and I, I'm encouraged because compared to Florida I think and based on your experience and based on something people said it sounds to me like um, 
there are a lot of vulnerable politicians, you know, in office here who aren't doing what, what people want them to do. And I think that like we finally do have an organization that's coming together, and we have people who are really upset who like agree about wanting certain things. And I think like I think that we could do a lot of stuff at the state level here. I mean, like what you did, you were kind of like, hey, you're not representing us. I'm gonna run. I mean. So I think, you know, if we can really get targeted and organized, we can start bullying these people the way that the NRA bullies them and making them scared of us and, and accountable. So that's my optimistic thing Thank today. Uh, my name is Luke. I'm, I'm a pretty pessimistic person overall, but I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've been trying to get out of these meetings since the election, too, but I, I got also sidetracked by the fire in Oakland. Uh, that's been kind of uh, heartening to have been like, part of a group of people nationwide. It's like all of a sudden working on trying to get all these different like underground spaces like safer for people, or you know trying to help people get from keeping uh, keep, keeping them from getting evicted that kind of thing. So they can keep doing that thing. Uh, so it's, it's just like one more way that we're all kind of like getting organized. 2017. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little easier than I think anyone maybe thinks it is to get organized. Uh, my name is Margie Jackson, um, and I guess the optimistic thing I have to say is that um, Janine's um, campaign really worked because I have met uh, Alaska. He did come to my house and did talk to me. And he seemed like a nice enough guy, and, and I do research my candidates before I vote for them online typically uh, where I get too much information it's too I don't know you know paragraph after paragraph so the mailings from Planned Parenthood are what got my vote um, that's because I got the mailing and it was a bullet point and it was simply the facts no nonsense and it wasn't stuff like I have five children and I went to Bishop Hendrick in high school. And I don't really care about that. The, yeah, <laughs> I don't care about that either. I want to know, did the, this, this person share the same beliefs that I did? Yes, okay. and, and that and having it very simply listed what I'm, you know, what the issues are and what, where your stand was. That works. So that's my optimistic thing. It works. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my name's Tammy Brown. I actually, I live in Providence, but I've been able to go to all the Providence meetings. Um, but it's nice to know that, like, you know, I missed a product meeting and then I, like, went to my Facebook feed and I was like, oh, this one's really more. Like, I'll see what's, I'll catch up, we'll see what's going on. So it's nice to see that they, that um, you, you can stay involved. It's, like, not that hard to stay involved. And there's so many, like, outlets now, whereas, like, before I might have felt strongly about all kinds of issues, but I didn't know exactly who was doing what or where to go, and all of a sudden, like, everybody's out there in the forefront, and everybody's saying, like, come on, and join us, and do that Yeah, in a way, there's so many people and so many ideas that, it, I guess it's a good thing, right? Because, like you were saying, we're, we're not really sure what's, yeah. yeah, but it's because the, the feedback and the, the number of people who want to get involved are so big, but that's a great thing to have, but right? It's so than, small compared to what you'd be dealing with in Texas or Arizona. Yeah trying to get together with people who are upset, right? right? So we're so lucky, we're so blessed that yeah. we're so small that we can sit together and, and talk about it. And then the guy who is in charge of two states for Planned Parenthood was able to come to our meeting yeah. and it wasn't a three hour drive. You know, like for me, that's that's one of my uplifting things. Just, it's, I've lived in many states and being in the smallest one, it has so many benefits. Unfortunately, not the having one newspaper, which I thought would be a benefit. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not really. Interesting. No. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's well, not we have local to be here anymore because it's not. It's not owned by anyone that they cares, right? Um, well, a couple things. I guess one is because I've been doing this work for a long time <laughs> and lobbying and organizing and all that stuff, and so, and it just seems like you know there's these cycles and then. You can just keep fighting the same battles over and over, and you know, like you can go to the state house and say, "We were fighting about the same issue like ten years ago." And it, well, 
then somebody, and I feel like, you know, then I get like depressed about that and say, I guess I'm not, I mean, I worked, my, when I was working, I was the coordinator of the Peace and Justice Office, right? And it's like, well, there's no peace and there's no justice, so like, I must have really done a crappy job. But, then somebody <laughs> said, but think about how bad it would be if we weren't doing the work. Like, you know, we only, think we can't prove a negative, you know, so you, you have, like, you don't get everything, but as long, and I, I, I know this sounds kind of crazy, but the positive thing about the orange man is that it's brought so many people that were complacent, that didn't understand that politics is an activity, you know, that, right. that you know, democracy is, is an, an action, action is an active <laughs> thing. And so people, all of a sudden, kind of, a lot of people woke up and said, oh, wait a minute, you know, I wasn't paying enough attention and now we have to do something. So I think in terms of getting people, you know, back involved in the process is a positive thing. Unfortunately, there's like so much to do that, you know, it's, it's an uphill thing, but I think in terms of a positive, it's been that done is, before, right? I mean, it's people coming together has changed the world. Well, because so. and the unfortunate thing is, it's like when somebody that you want in in the, okay, so so Janine won, okay, so I'm happy about that. But a lot of people that are happy about that then will say, well, great. Now I don't have to worry about it because right. Janine's yeah. going to take care of it, and that's where we end up messing up, okay? Because we're all organized because we don't like the orange man and he's going to do bad stuff, so we're going to do. But the people that are doing good stuff, we don't. We're not there then to to kind of support that and pay attention and say and and hold them accountable and say, okay, I voted for you because I, you know, uh, you share my values. But as time goes on, you know, and people get involved in the system things can change and so it's, I still need to pay attention and I still need right. to be supportive and just to address that in Longs we are only allowed to hold a position for a year to two years no more than that except for the people that were involved in Newtown they're allowed to stay other than that we have to move on because we get burnt out and then we get and then we take another position or we go drop down because being a regular volunteer and then you get that renewed energy again and then you can come back again and do something else but, you know, I'm entering my second year, you know, yeah, I can see, and, and I admire people, you're a little bit older than I am, and I admire you for coming before me and paving the way. And you guys worked hard, I mean, you did, and I can see that coming back. But I think it's a good way, you know, to step down, or if there's something else I can do, and just get your bearings back again. Want to introduce yourself? Sorry, what? <laughs> it's still on. My turn? Oh. Yeah, your turn. Well, I'm very encouraged by the energy that I'm hearing and seeing. Um, I'm a little discouraged about the apathy that I'm seeing in other people. I mean, we're in the room doing this, but there are a lot of fearful apathy. They seem apathetic. I don't know <clears throat> if they actually are. Um, okay. But I think there are a lot of people like me who are committed to fight no matter what, because to not fight is to give in. And I get derive great hope from that. And I think that uh, we can all draw on that strength from each other if we stay connected, too. And you were at an event earlier today. Right? <laughs> you want to talk about that one? The event you were at today at the State House? Just oh, yeah, it was very powerful. I thought, well, I am connected to women and allies, protest and strike out, and I tried to organize. I got Providence on their list and everything. I tried to organize two events, and absolutely no one showed up basically for that, nine people one day. And I thought, okay, it's just going to be me and my sign, so what, I'm going. And I think Steve Alquist calculated that maybe 100 people total came and went, and it was a pretty sizable group. There was a guy with a bullhorn um, yelling out slogans and calling and answering and that kind of thing. And then at the end of the event, we were asked, do you want to stay out here and scream some more as the electors vote, or do you want to go inside? Go inside. It was like in the 20s, you know. So we went in and we actually, I never saw the 
Fife and Bugle Corps or whatever come march into the State House is very powerful. And so we watched as they all four of them cast their vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, I don't know if they were allowed to change their vote if they had to, if they wanted to. Um, so there's that doubt, but I'm sure glad that they kept their vote for Hillary. And so I learned recently that there are 273 electors who can flip their vote uh, without being penalized. So a bunch of us sent letters to all 273 electors. Many people did that. A very powerful letter just asking them very nicely, please consider what you're doing. So there's all sorts of things we can continue to do. That's right. Change. There was and unprecedented action. That yeah. action has never been taken before. So, to and me, was, that's powerful as well. It, actually, the I mean, this is the first time I can remember that the electoral college book got covered by the news. You know, because people wanted to know what was going on. Right. And the fact that you did have over 100 people out at the state house to kind of let it be known that you know that's where we stand. Well, even the organizing an event that yeah. didn't happen. It, I spread it everywhere I could, and people knew about it, they liked it, so they knew something was happening. That energy keeps moving forward and snowballs. So this will all keep snowballing, and I derive great hope from that, too. And that's why I like the rifuture.org's event calendar, because everything that's going on throughout the state is on there. Real news, as opposed to oh, being wow. yeah, and the news. <laughs> Such a cute little monster suit. <laughs> That sometimes, you know, you said, well, some people are, you know, are apathetic because they don't show up or whatever. And, and I think lots of people have lots of stuff going on in their life, you know, um, and and can't show up. And I think sometimes if we ask too much of people and expect too much of them, they can't do it, you know. So I think like something like a postcard, because again, the Rhode a small state. The legislators don't get contacted that much. If they get 10 letters on an issue, they might read the bill. You know, I mean, they get so many bills that they don't even know what happened from are. They just do what they're told. But if they get a bunch of letters from somebody on a specific bill, they might go look at it. You know, so I think we need to make sure that people have lots of ways to get involved and not make them feel guilty if they can't show up at a demonstration. And plus, the state house, they don't make it easy for people to testify or to, there's nowhere to park, there's no, you know, I mean, they make you wait till midnight on a bill that they don't want to hear about, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, there, needs to, be, all the time. there needs to be an array of, you know, involvement for right. people so they don't just feel like, oh, I can't, I'm not even going to phone calls right. right here, very effective. Yeah. Speaking of, of that too, postcards and RI Future and Steve, um, because they covered what the um, hate mail that had um, been sent to the mosque, in Rhode Island, what town it was, what town was that mosque? Is it in Providence that got the hate mail? Um, there was a woman at the Providence meeting who had postcards addressed to that faith community um, and just asked people to just write a note to them. And writing that note, like thinking about what I was going to write and writing it down was so powerful and knowing that they were going to give it to them. Like, I would never have thought to write a note to them. I just would have thought, oh, what do they care, you know, little old me. But when I saw her, she was passing them out all over. we do over. that with, with major issues, and we, we'll send out postcards, and I'll, I'll give them in my purse and just talk to you and talk to you. Yeah. And then we go to we go to the state house and we drop them at someone's desk. Now, we may keep them for six months, and then when that bill comes up, Oh no, they couldn't be here tonight, but here, you know, here's some postcards. Even on the federal level, they don't even read the stuff. They just put their, they just put them in a pile, the pro and the con, and they see which pile is bigger, you know, like they're, yeah. um, so. It's but the change.org petitions, from, from what I've seen, which is, you know, a fairly new way of writing letters, yeah. they're, they're, they are working, you know? Some of them are making a huge difference in terms of, I mean, just things like, 
recall laws for rental cars, like you know things like that that are about you know safety and things like that are like are making a huge difference. So getting on change.org and sign, you know, looking for the issues that matter to you is kind of like writing those letters as well. It's another way of doing it. It's fast and easy. Click, click, click. Yeah. And there was an action where it was about a week and a half ago where people signed a petition and they actually walked it over to um, Senator White House's office and gave, gave, yeah, gave, gave them the copies of the petition. Oh, you know, that's what's happening with the clemency thing is that they're bringing that petition to a walk saying, you know, we love what you're doing, keep, please keep doing it until your very last day. And, and, and here are seven more people whose stories are unbelievable. Please, you know, sort of related to that locally and see that on, on our future. We have a petition on there about the death penalty. You can go in front of me, it doesn't matter. Just zip. You're fine. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, so many, there's so many issues, and I feel like you can get very overwhelmed, but I'm, I'm just I'm glad that there's someone working on guns. You know, I'm glad there's someone who was involved a long time ago and is still involved, because that is very heartening for me. Um, yeah, but see, I'm heartened by seeing young people yeah. because yeah. we're getting tired. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think I think for um, the state house and stuff, we need to, and the politicians, we need for them to remember that you work for us, mm -hmm. and they forget that. And well, they forget because they get money from people like the NRA that that's who they're working and for. And one of one of the volunteers at the state house said she went up to one of the Senate member in the Senate and said. I'm sorry, my name's Amy and you are, and he said, you don't know who I am? You, know, you should know who I am. And he berated her for five or 10 minutes. Now, Amy's very sweet, I wouldn't have taken it. Um, you know, they need to remember, and, and the orange man needs to remember that he works for us too. Oh, he's no, I don't know. <laughs> Dan, you get a chance. Dan, do you have something positive and hopeful to say? <laughs> Yeah, coming out of the presidential election, uh, the majority of young Americans uh, voted for uh, Ray Sanders in Yay. the presidential primary. And uh, I think that the newer generation, the internet generation, has a little bit more of a, a broader worldview than their parents did. Uh, and I think that if we can, this country is extraordinarily resilient in its structure, the way the Constitution is written has been interpreted over the years, and I think that uh, it will survive even one catastrophic administration. And uh, I was going to bring up your point, which you made so well, about um, a lot of people, uh, th this election is a wake-up call for them, and I think that uh, I'm hoping that we will see record turnouts during the midterms this year, the, sorry, this, this coming uh, election in 2018, uh, because people are going to have a lot better idea of what's at, sorry, more people are going to be cognizant of what is at stake and uh, will get out and try to make a difference in it, whereas previously midterm elections, I think, were pretty much ignored. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, somebody else mentioned a lot of these uh, Republican organizations like the NRA are extraordinary, not just funded, but they're almost fanatical in their uh, organization getting and their devotion out. to getting out. And that's how uh, the Tea Party got into power. But if they can do it, we can do it. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, that's where we'll see the biggest wave of change next. You know, my granddaughter's four, and she's in the car with me, and I always have NPR on, and if they say anything about Bernie Sanders, she's like, she'll hear it. Like, she she doesn't, she's not listening because I don't have it on loud because I really don't want her to hear it. And, you know, yeah. and she'll say, Bernie Sanders, he's my favorite. <laughs> my my four-year-old my four year old says, yeah. when he, said, he hears Trump, and even if I say something, he goes, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Some of the kids in my son's Okay, I'm shutting off.